dear guests and very few local attendances. <laughs> um, it's a bit shame that we are so few from uh, from Estonian side here, but partly I, I add to this modest audience uh, Ray Müllerson because he is also Estonian uh, by origin and working in Tallinn. Uh, and our other guests are uh, specialists in matters of tolerance and how to create uh, legal instruments to, to uh, avoid intolerance and uh, make people more tolerant in societies. Uh, states' problems are coming from different things. They might have uh, economic problems, they have, might have some natural catastrophes, but m most problems, I would think, are coming from different uh, examples of intolerance in society. And if, say, if, say these patterns of intolerance are going under, uh, out of control and, uh, and are not treated or understand, uh, understand properly, then they might be really dangerous for societies and uh, make uh, conflicts in societies and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, quite often the very origin of, of uh, problems in societies are uh, different patterns or examples of intolerance and uh, this working group, which uh, part of which is just uh, in front of us, have taken uh, this challenge to draft the uh, international law instrument, uh, how you specify it, uh, you will explain, to make some contra-actions against intolerance and, uh, and uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, they have been in different countries to explain how uh, this uh, work has been done and what aims it pursues. And today is a day where uh, they are going to introduce what they have done for Estonian uh, Estonian uh, parliaments. But there are not many. Uh, parliament members here, but there are some uh, people who are really interested in it, and so I, I think uh, we will hear about this work more in the coming future uh, when this initiative reaches certain certain end and uh, becomes uh, becomes maybe a legal instrument with binding force or not. I don't know. We will talk about it. But anyway, uh, it's a valuable initiative and uh, we will be happy to hear more about this. Thank you. And so I give the floor to Rein Müllersen. Thank you, uh, uh, Wright, uh, for uh, organizing uh, this event here, our meeting, and inviting us to uh, the parliament. Uh, for me, it is maybe especially uh, great pleasure to be here because I worked is in this building for six, seven uh, months when we just had, uh, before we regained our independence and at the very beginning of the first period of uh, independence, the foreign ministry was uh, in this uh, building at that time. And since then, I haven't been here uh, many times, uh, a few times, of course, and it's uh, a great pleasure uh, for me. Now, a few words about uh, the commission uh, or the group, working group, which was uh, set up uh, by the European Council on uh, Tolerance and uh, Reconciliation. And Ireneus, uh, uh, Dr. Bill, Ireneus Bill is here, who is the Secretary General of uh, this uh, 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 Council, and he will uh, say a few words about the project as a whole. 
I would like uh, uh, shortly to introduce uh, the members of uh, uh, the uh, uh, working group uh, um, which have uh, 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 drafted this document uh, and redrafted uh, it uh, several uh, times. Uh, uh, the group uh, is headed by uh, Professor Joram Dinstein from uh, Israel, uh, who is a great uh, friend of mine, first of all, the most important thing, uh, and he tolerates uh, me. <laughs> That's uh, also very significant uh, for uh, me. And uh, he is uh, the former president and uh, rector of uh, uh, the Tel Aviv uh, uh, University and one of uh, the most prominent international lawyers in uh, the world whose work especially on uh, use of force and the laws of armed conflict are uh, known all over the world. Then Professor Rudiger Wolfrum, who is not uh, uh, today here, he is the director of uh, the Max Planck Institute in Heidelberg and also uh, the judge and the former president of the Law of the Sea a Tribunal in uh, Hamburg. Then uh, uh, Daniel Thurer uh, uh, from uh, Switzerland, who happens to be, uh, interestingly, the president of uh, the German International Law uh, Association. And he is also a member of the European uh, Commission uh, Against Racism and Intolerance, uh, set up by uh, or under the aegis of the Council of uh, Europe. And uh, Hugo Genesio, the former judge of the Supreme Court of uh, Italy, and also uh, the co founder and secretary general of the Sanremo International Institute of Humanitarian Law. And Joram Dinstein has been also very active in uh, that uh, institute. And finally, uh, myself, uh, uh, currently uh, still president of the uh, of the law school of Tallinn University and also uh, president of the International Law Institute uh, and Joram and practically all members of our group except Hugo Genesio who is not an international lawyer but practitioner mostly uh, uh, are members of the Institute of International Law uh, as well. And uh, now I would like us, uh, to ask uh, Ireneus uh, uh, to say a few words about our project and what we have done and what we intend to achieve uh, uh, from it. Thank you very much, Wayne, for the kind introduction. My name is Ireneus Bill. I am the Secretary General of the European Council on Tolerance and Reconciliation. Although it is sounding like a very large international institutions. This is in fact a non-governmental institution which has been established in 2008 by former presidents and prime ministers uh, from Europe which devoted, dedicated part of their the lives, activities when they are the presidents, prime ministers to promoting tolerance, reconciliation and stamping out intolerance. And the idea was of them to establish a body which would be a platform for the continuation of that the task that they have taken so seriously, namely for crafting ideas, how to enforce uh, tolerance, how to promote tolerance, but also how to stamp out intolerance in Europe. So it's, as you can see, quite a fresh uh, NGO established in 2008. We are six years old, but uh, today we came here to Tallinn with one of our principal projects, uh, which was uh, uh, which has started shortly after the economic and financial crisis, because, as you know, this crisis has been also a serious source of a rising tide of racism, xenophobia, and anti-Semitism in Europe. Unfortunately, this tide is not, not over, we still are witnessing in a row of countries not only right-wing parties winning elections, but also a lot of accidents of different background uh, against uh, people of different color, of different religion, uh, against immigrants. So this is a challenge that Europe is still facing 
and not depending whether it's uh, the old part of the European Union or whether these are new member states of the European Union. So because uh, the Council itself is composed of, of around 15 people, there were some names like Alexander Kwasniewski, the former president of Poland, Jose Maria Aznar, the former prime minister of Spain, also the late Václav Havel from Czech Republic. Here from the Baltic states, unfortunately, do not, we do not have anyone from Estonia yet, <clears throat> but a member of our council is Vaira Vike Freiberger, the former president of, of uh, Latvia. Uh, so, uh, coming back to our projects, since the majority of our members of the Council are not lawyers, we have called together this group that Rain was introducing in order, to, uh, with, in order to do two tasks. The first task was to make a review of the exi existing legislation in Europe in the area of promoting tolerance, of human rights, of uh, stamping out intolerance. And it was done basically first on the knowledge of these people and second on the books and all the work of the watchdogs, European watchdogs, like the ECRI or the Agency for Fundamental Rights, which are present in Europe. And second, on that base, to try to propose a national statute, which would not have been adopted on the European level, but rather on the national level, and that can, could be later proposed to different European countries, constituencies, as a kind of a, a, a pattern that could be uh, either at large or partially implemented in national law. Uh, so the idea is uh, already being promoted in several countries. Estonia is not the first country and not the last that we are coming with this presentation. We have already done it in uh, the Parliament of Rome, in the Parliament of uh, Hungary, in Zagreb, also in Austria, in Vienna, and uh, in the next months we have also scheduled presentation in the Czech Republic, Romania, and hopefully also Belgium. So I will stop at this, uh, this moment and I will ask now Professor Dinstein, who has been uh, heading the group of our experts to uh, present the main outlay of the law that we are presenting to here today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, allow me to start with a general introduction on substance, if you wish, the intellectual background. We are talking about Europe. What we've done is framing a model statute for Europe. Now, if you take the European Union as a whole, there is no question about it that it is uh, founded on the idea of tolerance. Uh, Catholics have to be tolerant of Lutheranism, and Lutherans have to be tolerant of Cath Catholicism. Uh, the French have to be tolerant toward the Germans, the German toward the French. Uh, Hungarian uh, people have to tolerate uh, the fact that Romanians and Croats and others who were once in the Hungarian uh, uh, kingdom are today completely separate and go their own way. So tolerance is taken for granted and if you listen to the leadership, the elite in every country, everybody supports tolerance. It's like motherhood you know, how can you oppose tolerance? Of course, there were always incidents on the fringe, but this is true of every subject uh, in the world. Then came the most recent uh, elections to the European Parliament, and a great shock occurred in a number of countries, especially the UK and France, where people who were supposed to be on the fringe all of a sudden came to the center stage. In fact, the intolerant parties are actually the, the largest, judging by the results to the European elections in these two countries. And the big question is, how did it happen? It came as a great surprise to the leadership in Britain and France, but in fact it shouldn't have been such a great surprise. Because if you ask me, 
the exercise of tolerance is a, and I'll explain that, is the reason for the outcome of intolerance. Now, that sounds like a contradiction in terms. Let me explain. What I'm suggesting to you is that the tolerant governments have been remiss in two very important respects where tolerance is concerned. Number one, uh, they have forgotten the lesson of the Weimar Republic and uh, others that one need not be tolerant towards the intolerant. And moreover, that uh, one should carefully find out what is happening under one nose. Only this week, you may have seen it, I don't know, in the Estonian press, but it was certainly there in the general European press. The British government found in Birmingham a school for Muslims, which is subsidized by the, by the Brits, by the government. Turns out that this school has been preaching and teaching extremism, sending its students, when they graduate, uh, to, to the Middle East. It came as a big surprise because of the recent uh, unfortunate uh, terrorist attack in Brussels by a French Muslim that he, born in France, he is not the generation of immigrants, he is second generation, had gone to Syria and trained there for jihadis for 11 months. And uh, the French police uh, paid no attention. Although his name appeared, don't think that uh, he was under the radar completely. He was on the radar, but nobody paid any attention. In other words, tolerance has reached such a point where you do not take serious uh, inventory of what's going on. If this is tolerance, something is entirely wrong. Entirely wrong. And you can see it, I mentioned France, uh, if you go to Paris, you find out something which is very bizarre. Paris is Paris, the eternal city of light. It does not change much. But the so-called banlieue of uh, Paris, the suburbs around Paris are not French at all. These are self-imposed ghettos producing the kind of extremism that uh, the French government certainly is not happy about. So that is one aspect of tolerance, which is decidedly wrong, in my opinion. The second aspect, which is uh, also wrong, is that uh, most of the governments in Europe think that it's enough to say we are for tolerance, you know, repeating a mantra. And as far as people are concerned, you know, it's like going to church on Sunday, you listen to the priest giving a sermon. This does not affect how you behave on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so forth. So you listen to it, so what? And it is the responsibility of a government to turn this from a ritualistic thing into a real thing. How do you do it? And our answer is uh, three ways. Number one, education. We have to educate people to be tolerant. It doesn't happen by itself. You cannot simply hope that uh, the best will happen and then be surprised that what is happening is not the best but the worst. You have to do something about it in terms of education, and I'll come back to education. Secondly, uh, the criminal code has to be adjusted and attuned to protect tolerance. We'll come back to that also. And thirdly, and not uh, of least importance, uh, supervision, monitoring. How do you ensure that what's going on is in accordance with what you want as a parliament? And I'll come back to that as well. Now, all in all is that uh, we, ha we are actually in need of what you might call a balancing act. You have to balance, to bear in mind that tolerance has limitations, and Professor Millerson will speak at length 
on the question of limitations. But it's not only limitations, it's also the question of uh, the proper equilibrium between diversity and solidarity, between non-assimilation and integration. In other words, what you have is a state. A state is a roof. Everybody wants to live in that state as to live under the same roof with everybody else around him or her. Now, that everybody else, the other, may belong to a different group. And I'll define a group in a few minutes. And every group is entitled to be different. This is the whole idea about tolerance. You have to be tolerant of the fact that the other group is different. At the same time, the other group is not entitled to say, we don't care about the societal roof. We keep apart from it. So if you want to live in a country, you have to bear in mind uh, of who else lives there. Nobody can force you to assimilate, but at the same time, you must adjust to what the state is all about. And you cannot, if you are a migrant, and I'll come to migrants also in a few minutes, if you are a migrant and you come to, to France or to Sweden or to so many of the other European countries which absorb large numbers of migrants, you cannot say, I've come from wherever I came from and I shall continue to live as if I were there. You've chosen to live in France, so you have to bear in mind you have to become French to some extent. You have to study the language. You have to study the history. You have to study the culture. Even if you say, I'm different. In other words, if you live in Estonia, you are entitled to say, for me it's easy, I'm a Jew. Okay, but you have to be an Estonian Jew. You cannot say, I'm a Jew and I live in Israel. You want to live in Israel, go to Israel. If you come to Estonia, remember, you have become Estonian. Even if you retain your different culture, your different uh, background, your different language. And now I come to the specific. Uh, you will see why I had to start with this lengthy introduction. We start actually with, a, uh, with definitions. That's usually the case. Maybe you could put on the screen, is it uh, yeah, on definitions? I think okay. I will manage. Yeah. Okay, so we, we define actually four things. First of all, it's group. What groups are we talking about? Not every group is protected under international law. The classical definition of groups is uh, ethnic, cultural, religious, linguistic. That's the classical. You will find it for those who are interested in uh, Article 27 of the International Covenant on uh, Civil and Political Rights. We have added, because this is now very contemporary, uh, also uh, the issue of uh, sex, both in terms of feminism and in terms of uh, defense against homophobia. And again, bear in mind, uh, being tolerant does not mean that you move to the other group. If you are a tolerant uh, Lutheran, uh, that does not, and you are tolerant vis-a-vis -vis Catholic, that does not mean that you have to subscribe to the Catholic dogma. You are only tolerant of their doing that. And the same is true here. You don't have to be a woman in order to be pro-feminist, and you don't have to be homosexual in order not to be homophobic. The rest does not follow. So that's group. Number two, uh, we have to consider the, the issue of uh, group libel, which is a very important part of what we are proposing. You find it in very few legislations in Europe today. What we are saying is you are not allowed to libel a group as such. Even when the libel, 
does not immediately lead to violence. If it immediately leads to violence, it's obvious. But even if it is not just ridiculing a group, just uh, making it uh, appear to be completely you know, sub substandard, and by implication maybe subhuman, this will ultimately lead to very unfortunate results as history shows. And that's why we are saying you are not allowed to do it. So you are not allowed to say all gypsies are thieves. Because this is the beginning of later saying, well, if all gypsies are thieves, and if their parents were all thieves, and their children will all be thieves, uh, we should uh, probably get rid of them somehow. This is why it's so dangerous, and this is why we think that we have to emphasize it. The third one is hate crimes. Now, hate crimes appear in the legislations of uh, most European countries, but not in a way that we deem appropriate because usually it's regarded as related to freedom of expression only. We say that this has nothing to do per se with freedom of expression. What are hate crimes? Our answer is very simple. Every crime can be a hate crime. How or when? When it's related to a group. In other words, you commit a crime against a person not because you have something against that person, but because that person is associated with a group. So if you attack a person because he is a, a Catholic, or because he's an American, or because he is a gypsy, because he belongs, that's a hate crime as far as we are concerned. Uh, the fourth and last is tolerance. And that is uh, the easiest, uh, perhaps, to define. But still, there are issues here. And uh, we regard uh, intolerance as uh, including, uh, of course, xenophobia, extremism, totalitarianism, uh, anti-Semitism, and other forms of anti-religion. Now, the reason why anti-Semitism is different is simply because hatred of Jews does not necessarily relate to religion. Under Hitler, uh, people were sent to the, to the extermination camps even if they've converted. It didn't matter if they converted because there was something uh, impure in their blood, so to speak. That's what makes anti-Semitism different because if a person is... Uh, hating uh, Islam and a person and another person uh, who was formerly Muslim converts into Christianity or Buddhism, it doesn't matter. You no longer regard him as a Muslim, right? With Jews it's different. So these are the definitions. Okay, now uh, what we are saying is that uh, the rights that are guaranteed are basically all human rights. You can show uh, section uh, three, are basically all human rights. But I, I want to emphasize that uh, the issue of tolerance is not only vertical, it's also horizontal. In other words, it's not only between the individual and the government. It's not only a duty, a, an obligation, imposed on the government to be tolerant of the people. It's also horizontal. So one group must be tolerant of the others. And this applies not only to majority vis-a-vis -vis minority, it also applies to minority vis-a-vis -vis majority and to minority vis-a-vis -vis other minorities. And that is not something that people easily apply. It's easier to understand, to grasp, to perceive. In theory, it's much more difficult to apply this in practice, but we emphasize it. And uh, we want to then move to limitations, which would be dealt with by uh, Professor Millerson. So I want to move uh, to section five, uh, migrants. I promise to return to migrants. What we are saying is that a migrant 
as I mentioned, when he comes to France, he's supposed to be French. Now, if it turns out that a person is incapable of doing that, he cannot accept the idea that uh, not only does he have a right to be different, but he has to duty, the duty to somehow blend in the country. Then he forfeits the right to enter. And we are saying that a migrant who cannot adjust to the principle of the balancing act, to the principle of uh, societal solidarity, that is to say the integration without assimilation, could go back. That's what we are saying. And it's uh, completely permissible as long as the person is not a citizen. That is to say you cannot expel a citizen but you can definitely expel a migrant before you become a citizen. And actually, there is even a non-binding decision of the Council of Ministers in the European Union that accept this idea. But it's not very well known. We want to highlight it. Now, implementation. In terms of implementation, uh, we think that this is the monitoring issue, that it's not enough that the government will have uh, an ombudsman, somebody which every European government has, to monitor it. Because the question is, uh, who will monitor the monitors? Who will be the custodian of the custodians? And very often, uh, the party that is to blame is the government. So what we are proposing, and this is uh, quite uh, unique, is to establish actually a special independent supervisory commission, uh, which uh, we call uh, a National Tolerance Monitoring uh, Commission. And this commission consists not of people appointed by the government, but by, independ by independent people, and they are monitoring the government. Not only that, they are allowed to go beyond monitoring into dissemination, into contacts with similar groups abroad, into making sure that uh, tolerance is not only preached, but it is actually carried out. Now, uh, penal sanctions. You can move to section seven. Uh, Penal sanction, sanctions mean that uh, we regard, you remember hate crimes? So hate crimes should be actually regarded as aggravated crimes. In other words, if we are talking a minor offense, but the minor offense becomes a hate crime, and you remember my definition, a hate crime is a crime which is in Involve, in, which involves a group, the minor offense is no longer minor. It becomes a major offense. And uh, that has serious consequences in law because what we want to ensure is that the person who commits a hate crime will not simply get uh, community service as punishment or uh, probate or a suspended sentence. We want him to be treated as a major criminal. We want group libel to go into the law as a crime. You commit a group libel, it's a, it's a crime. And we also go into the rather controversial issue in a number of countries in Europe, and that is the denial of genocide. Denial of the Holocaust is today taken practically for granted in most European countries. But the big issue is what do you do with the Armenian genocide, for example? And as you know, there have been uh, very serious uh, debates about it. And we have found a formula which we think is uh, ideal. And that is you are not allowed to deny a genocide if the perpetration of the genocide was determined as a fact by an international court of tribunal, which means you are not allowed to deny the Holocaust, that was determined in Nuremberg. You are not allowed to deny the Rwanda genocide, 
that was determined by the International Criminal Tribunal in Rwanda. You are not allowed to deny Srebrenica. That was determined by the International Criminal Tribunal for Yugoslavia. On the other hand, nobody made such a, no court of, no international, I'm sorry, no international court of law has made such a finding about the Armenian genocide. So you are allowed to say, no, I don't believe in the Armenian genocide. It's a personal matter. That is the solution that we have found, and we think that uh, it's a very good one. Now, education. Education, we think, is something that must take place from the cradle to the grave. You have to start very early on, very early on, in kindergarten, and go on in school. And elementary school and high school, and in college, university, and so forth, but even beyond adult education. And moreover, one has to pay particular attention to law enforcement agencies, police, to the armed forces, those who hold rifles in their hands. They have to be taught what tolerance is all about. And it's not enough just to say that teaching should be done because somebody has to provide the educational tools, the training books have to be prepared. Somebody has to make sure that the syllabus, the curriculum will include it. Somebody has to make sure that uh, instructors will be trained. Who's that somebody? The answer is the government. So the government has to invest. It's not enough for the government to sit idle as it does today in Europe, repeating that mantra of tolerance that I mentioned before. Uh, but it has to put money where its mouth is. And then and only then is there hope that tolerance will uh, thrive. We've also dealt with uh, media we are very, of course, conscious of the problem of uh, censorship, and that's why we are suggesting that the solution should lie in the establishing of a committee that is uh, monitored by the media themselves. In other words, that uh, if there is censorship, it should not be by the government. It should be by the media themselves, the Media Complaints Committee, which exists in Britain, incidentally and works quite well. I'm not saying that it's ideal, but uh, you know, as usual in life, the question is not what is uh, best, but what is the least of evil. And what we do not want is to introduce censorship. Finally, let me say there is the issue of the internet, which we have avoided. It's a very complicated issue. It's become even more complicated with the very peculiar decision of the European Court recently about Google. Nobody knows as yet how this decision is going to be implemented. In all probability, the court will find that it's not going to be implemented. Uh, I think that you know what this is all about, that a person has a right, according to the court, to clear his past. That is to say, if a pedophile becomes uh, a children's doctor, he is allowed to insist that if you Google him, you will not find that he has been convicted of pedophilia. Very strange decision, but uh, the Google response is very simple. Google says you don't want it in Europe. Okay, so Google Europe will not mention it. But it will say this has been censored, which will tell you go look for Google in the United States. You can get into Google in the United States, and the Google in the United States will tell you everything because in the United States there is no censorship, and the European decision is invalid there. Now, I mention it at length only in order to show how complicated the matter of the controlling the Internet is. Uh, we have decided that uh, we have undertaken a complex enough subject, namely tolerance, intolerance, and so forth. We don't want, uh, you know, to take this opportunity in order also to solve all of the problems of the world in general, including the problem of the internet. So we have left the internet uh, in a limbo.
in time this will be resolved. Finally, one comment. As you heard, we are going from one country to another. I'm not suggesting to you that what is uh, the proper thing to legislate in Croatia or in Italy is necessarily the proper thing to legislate in Estonia. Every country has its own special needs, its all own special circumstances, and it's entirely possible that the law in Estonia, if adopted, uh, as we <coughs> hope, will be different from the law as adopted in Italy. So in a sense, what we are offering is a smorgasbord. Choose what is appropriate for you. But what you cannot afford, in our opinion, either in Estonia or in any other European country, is to ignore the issue. You must come to grips with the issue. You must decide to have legislation. <coughs> And then you choose the legislation from what we are offering based on what you deem uh, the most appropriate solution for your own country. Thank you. So thank you, Joram, for this uh, quite wide introduction. And uh, now I'll talk about uh, the specific rights and their uh, possible limitations also in a uh, quite a short way. But also, uh, let me start with some general reflections. Uh, when uh, Joram spoke, I thought that uh, I have, I don't believe that, for example, human rights are natural. Uh, 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 I was told uh, uh, that human rights, are, all human rights are natural by uh, the head of the security services of Azerbaijan in 1994, a general uh, there from, from the former Soviet KGB <coughs> also. And when I told uh, him that I don't think that human rights are natural, so he was so surprised that I, coming from the West, I was <coughs> working in London then, that I, I, I don't think uh, so. But I really don't think so. If human rights were all very natural, then we, we would uh, be without uh, jobs. I mean, professors of international uh, law and so on, and judges also of the European Court on Human uh, Rights. It is exactly that they are not so uh, natural at all. And uh, there is an interesting book I recommend you to read is uh, Rights from Wrongs, which shows that human rights are needed as protection against certain wrongs. And these wrongs uh, have been traditionally uh, na quite natural. And if we speak about tolerance and intolerance, I believe Historically, intolerance has been quite natural. Uh, intolerance of strangers, of people who speak different languages, especially if they profess different religions, and uh, so on. And today it may be sexual orientation, uh, 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 the color of uh, the skin, and uh, so on. Therefore, this importance of education, constant education, also uh, uh, adoption of uh, relevant and necessary uh, legislation and so on. This is uh, very uh, important uh, and uh, this applies to human rights generally and to uh, 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 rights which uh, guarantee uh, 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 and promote uh, tolerance in uh, societies. First of all, very shortly uh, about these rights which are here. Of course, you can see, and uh, I am uh, uh, even a bit embarrassed uh, uh, expressing this before the former judge of the European Court on Human Rights, that these are all rights uh, basically uh, guaranteed in uh, the European uh, Convention on Human Rights and in other documents. Uh, these are not all, of course, rights. The list is not uh, exhaustive here. There may be some other rights which, in specific circumstances, may become uh, relevant for the promotion and protection of uh, tolerance uh, in the, for the fight against uh, intolerance. But these are uh, uh, basic uh, rights. 
For example, if we take the freedom of expression uh, here, uh, it uh, has, uh, is a general right in practically all uh, human rights instruments. But uh, here there is a specific angle uh, for that. For example, it uh, means access uh, to a mass media, not only uh, as a recipient of uh, what uh, others uh, say, but also an access to mass uh, media in order to impart uh, uh, one's own views, uh, uh, to distribute uh, in information and so on, concerning uh, uh, protection of the uh, and uh, tolerance towards uh, the groups uh, Professor Dinstein has just uh, spoken uh, about. Uh, because uh, uh, no dialogue is uh, possible uh, between uh, minorities uh, uh, and uh, majorities between minorities, uh, the, the different minorities themselves, uh, themselves. If there is no uh, access to a mass me media, no, no freedom of expression in the widest uh, 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 meaning uh, guaranteed. Uh, then uh, the freedom of uh, religion, of course, is of uh, uh, central uh, importance in uh, that respect because religious groups uh, uh, are one of uh, those groups which uh, are protected uh, uh, or our uh, uh, draft uh, aims to uh, uh, protect the, their um, uh, right to exist, to, to develop and uh, uh, not to be discriminated against and uh, to be uh, tolerated. Uh, you know, in Europe, of course, uh, these problems uh, exist in uh, many European countries. It may uh, uh, concern Christians uh, wearing uh, uh, the cross, uh, as, uh, as in France, the issue of headscarves uh, for uh, Muslims, and uh, so uh, on. So, uh, uh, and uh, if I may, so. Uh, uh, from the, this quite long uh, list, uh, list of rights, let me uh, put it here, uh, rights. Yeah, uh, uh, one more right, uh, right to acquire nationality based on birth or long-term uh, residence. Uh, if, of course, this uh, right is of special importance for uh, several countries concerning migrants, uh, of which uh, uh, Joram uh, spoke uh, about. And it is important uh, in terms of um, their integration in uh, the wider uh, society, uh, the right to acquire a nationality uh, uh, based on birth or long-term uh, residence in uh, respective uh, countries. And maybe now a bit more about uh, limitations of uh, these uh, rights. And uh, Professor Tinstein already uh, mentioned uh, that our uh, draft uh, is uh, balanced. And if we are criticized, we are criticized uh, sometimes uh, from the left as if and from the right uh, as, as well. Uh, uh, some uh, uh, critics uh, find that our uh, draft uh, is uh, uh, too much about tolerance. Uh, it is about uh, tolerating practically everything. Uh, and then uh, from the different angle, uh, our work has been criticized by some uh, uh, because we also uh, emphasize uh, the need uh, 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 to limit uh, uh, not only certain rights, uh, but also to, uh, to limit uh, tolerance of uh, everything. So there is. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the point uh, is uh, that not everything has to be uh, tolerated. First of all, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, practices and legislation in uh, Europe. So uh, in the light of European values, in the light of uh, 
the uh, European Convention on Human Rights and uh, in the light of the practice of the European uh, Court on uh, Human Rights and other uh, European institutions uh, as well. So there are certainly certain practices uh, and we have uh, in our draft uh, named uh, some like female circumcision uh, which uh, are not to be tolerated in Europe and practically of course it is the issue in the world as a whole but certainly not in Europe. Such practices uh, uh, shouldn't be uh, tolerated. So uh, there are uh, limits to uh, certain uh, uh, practices. Uh, th then, of course, uh, 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 there is no need to uh, tolerate uh, those who are intolerant. Though this is a, 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 an issue which is uh, 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 quite uh, sensitive uh, because uh, intolerant, those who are intolerant uh, still uh, retain their human rights uh, uh, and uh, they, uh, their rights have to be protected uh, too. But uh, as to uh, uh, them being intolerant, especially towards other groups, which are, are protected under our uh, uh, draft, uh, this, uh, in that respect, their intolerance uh, should not be uh, tolerated, should not be uh, protected. And uh, uh, this morning I watched uh, uh, the news, it was on the BBC, uh, Mario Monti, uh, the former Prime Minister of uh, Italy, was inter interviewed uh, uh, in uh, the programme called uh, The Hard Talk. Uh, I, I believe you may have uh, seen uh, sometimes it is a very interesting um, uh, uh, discussion, uh, hard discussion, really, uh, usually. And uh, uh, here Mario Monti was asked about the parliamentary elections, uh, uh, elections to the Euro Parliament uh, recent. And he uh, said something uh, which is uh, very uh, central from uh, my point of view. It was that uh, the results of these elections, and especially in uh, uh, the countries like the UK and uh, uh, France, where uh, the uh, UK uh, Dependence Party and uh, the Front National en France, where they uh, won uh, the, these elections, uh, this fact, uh, on the one hand, reveals some serious problems. So these uh, parties, uh, intolerant uh, parties, had uh, raised uh, issues, problems which are real, uh, are genuine in many, uh, not in, in uh, all, uh, I would say, but in many European uh, countries on one hand. But they then proposed uh, measures which would uh, make uh, these problems even worse or create new uh, uh, problems. So uh, therefore one has to be taken, uh, uh, take, uh, one has to take very ser seriously uh, these uh, uh, problems like uh, uh, I would call then uh, self-segregation uh, of certain uh, minorities. Uh, 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 like uh, 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 Joran spoke about Paris, uh, I have lived for a long time in London. You have to go, yeah. Uh, uh, Jerry, uh, I'm sorry, I have another obligation to go, and, uh, but I have one question. Yep.
uh, I think that Joram may say, because Joram, as uh, usually uh, from the very beginning, said <laughs> that probably he did make today it very clear. So Joram, please uh, do that. Well, as you know, there is no treaty on tolerance, either in Europe or in the globe at large. Everybody talks about it, nobody does anything about it. Why not? There are so many European treaties, and yet not one on tolerance. Simply because the hope or the chance of reaching consensus, even in Europe, over a single text is non-existent. This is why we are emphasizing the national approach. This is not a draft treaty. It's a draft law. And we would suggest that a group of legislators here in Tallinn will submit this or revised text. As I mentioned, uh, this is not uh, something that we are trying to force down your throat. Take a look at it and find out if it's acceptable. But some of it must be acceptable. The part which is acceptable should be presented as a bill to Parliament and hopefully will be adopted. And if it's adopted in a series of European countries, there will also be some sort of a snowball effect. One will help the others. And I think that it's easier to start in a smaller country like uh, Estonia than in a large country like uh, Germany, for obvious political reasons. So we would hope that you will pick up the ball and run with it. Thank you. And uh, of course, certainly uh, legislative uh, acts of uh, uh, most, if not all, European countries, they contain already something uh, what is uh, proposed here. So uh, it is not that uh, there is uh, nothing in national legislation, but there is no single uh, comprehensive uh, document uh, either in any of the European uh, countries which would uh, deal with issues of tolerance. And also, I would uh, once again emphasize uh, issues of uh, uh, limitation to tolerance. Not everything, uh, every practice uh, has to be uh, equally tolerated, or sometimes uh, it should not be tolerated at all. And I would once again emphasize that uh, uh, this is uh, uh, one of the novelties of our uh, document. We are not uh, uh, the naive, blue-eyed, uh, sometimes uh, human rights activists uh, who believe that everything has to be tolerated, free, uh, no uh, legislation, no uh, 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 sanctions, uh, uh, concerning or no limitations uh, concerning uh, human uh, rights. Uh, now, uh, uh, what, what I uh, uh, want uh, Raik Maruste had uh, to leave, uh, what uh, I was going to uh, say, uh, <coughs> it was uh, that uh, one of uh, the practices uh, which uh, has to be avoided and uh, through the prom uh, promotion of uh, tolerance and uh, also uh, using these uh, limitations and uh, using good practices of some uh, countries uh, uh, which have uh, uh, better resolves, uh, resolve these issues. Though I don't think there is any, any country which is ideal in that respect. It is uh, that uh, certain uh, uh, minorities, uh, be they ethnic uh, or religious or uh, uh, both, they uh, use uh, the practice which may uh, be called uh, uh, self-segregation. They uh, uh, establish uh, themselves in different uh, parts of big cities uh, like uh, London or in uh, some uh, uh, cities, uh, 
we, uh, we, uh, let's say I know uh, um, uh, some of them in uh, the UK, like uh, Leeds, uh, where my uh, son went to university and so on. Uh, so, uh, and what has happened there, some uh, things were what um, uh, Joram uh, uh, mentioned uh, now uh, in different schools, uh, uh, they uh, uh, promote uh, extremism uh, also uh, and uh, they, uh, these minorities are not integrated in uh, the wider society. In Britain, in London, in uh, the area called Brixton, there were riots probably, uh, I don't remember exactly, in the year 2000 or so. It is exactly that uh, the, these uh, communities, uh, these areas uh, become also uh, almost, uh, almost no-go uh, areas for uh, the police, uh, uh, let's uh, uh, say. And uh, as the education, uh, the level of education uh, is a different, uh, relatively uh, poor, uh, these uh, uh, people don't find uh, 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 jobs in the wider society. They uh, very often don't speak uh, or don't speak well the language of the, uh, the country. And uh, this creates uh, huge uh, problems. Uh, therefore, this uh, integration uh, uh, of uh, minorities into uh, the wider society and the interest, uh, interests and uh, the stability of the wider uh, society are uh, very uh, important. Uh, now, uh, we in our in our uh, uh, draft have uh, quite specific uh, uh, limitations. And these are basically limitations uh, that are allowed uh, in various human rights instruments. Uh, the most important for Europe uh, uh, is, of course, the European Convention uh, on Human Rights, because, but it is also the uh, UN uh, Covenant on Civil and uh, Political Rights and you can uh, see uh, what these limitations are. Uh, they are uh, uh, interests of national or international security, uh, public order or public, uh, public policy, public morals, public health, and uh, protection of the rights and freedoms of uh, others. Uh, and. Uh, Specifically, I would like to draw your attention to uh, the combats, because if uh, these rights um, and also limitations may uh, uh, sound quite uh, general, uh, on the one hand, rights have to be interpreted in uh, the uh, uh, widest uh, meaning, uh, limitations have to be inter in, uh, interpreted uh, in, and, and applied uh, in a narrow uh, uh, manner and uh, the rights are not exhaustive uh, while the limitations, the list of limitations is, is exhaustive. Um, uh, so, uh, but uh, in the comments or explanatory note uh, under uh, uh, every of these uh, possible uh, limitations, you can uh, find uh, 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 some examples which explain how uh, these possible limitations uh, uh, have to be applied in order uh, uh, to uh, deal with issues of intolerance. And it is also interesting that yeah, in order uh, to promote tolerance, uh, you have to be intolerant towards certain uh, uh, practices. And, uh, uh, for here, here you can find, I would like maybe uh, to mention only uh, some uh, that uh, in order to uh, fight crime, persons may not be allowed to cover their faces in uh, public. Uh, it, it was uh, in the UK a big problem when uh, people came to the bank uh, having these uh, helmets. Uh, they, uh, they, when they ride a, a, a motorcycle, uh, so they use helmets. And they enter the bank uh, wearing these helmets. 
this, <laughs> this was uh, quite scary, uh, really. You don't know how to react, to uh, lie down immediately or to, or to wait uh, a bit. So, uh, uh, this, uh, of course, on the street you can do that. Uh, uh, on the motorbike it is obligatory, but uh, entering uh, a bank or some other uh, establishment, uh, it may be uh, prohibited, and uh, so on. And then uh, uh, religious, uh, let's say, attire, uh, Sikhs uh, wear turbans and long uh, air uh, all the time. But there may be some limitations uh, for uh, uh, in certain places, like in uh, uh, the chocolate uh, chocolate factory, for example, or in Canada, in the police uh, mounting. Uh, Police. Uh, the, the, there was an uh, issue uh, whether uh, it uh, uh, would be uh, possible to uh, 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 limit uh, access to uh, certain uh, jobs uh, for uh, Sikhs because they uh, uh, wear turbans uh, and uh, not. Uh, uh, the uniform provided uh, for uh, certain uh, police uh, forces in uh, that uh, country. Then uh, one uh, point uh, which um, is uh, quite sensitive uh, uh, in our uh, draft uh, is uh, the status of uh, migrants. Joram spoke about it. I would like to emphasize uh, uh, the importance of uh, dealing sensitively and in a timely manner with this issue, especially in Estonia. Uh, because Estonia is still for migrant, uh, migrants mostly a uh, transit country, or the, our uh, 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 citizens' national uh, work in Finland and in some other countries. But uh, I believe uh, that uh, in the future, and not in, uh, in a very distant future, Estonia will uh, face more and more uh, migrants and uh, the problems uh, related to uh, migrants, migrant uh, workers. So it is necessary to regulate these issues and to uh, think uh, well be, uh, before the issue uh, becomes as uh, uh, topical or as urgent as in some uh, European countries. I don't know exactly why, uh, uh, but uh, uh, people uh, now uh, uh, want, <laughs> migrants uh, most often want to, uh, or they are not only the migrants, refugees, uh, want to go to the United Kingdom. Uh, France is not good enough uh, anymore, and in Calais uh, th there is a, a camp of uh, refugees, and they storm uh, the uh, tunnel uh, at night in order to uh, get to uh, the UK. So uh, as in, uh, that, in the light of uh, this experience, Estonia uh, certainly is not so not yet so attractive for uh, migrants, but I believe uh, it will uh, change, and change um, uh, uh, quite uh, or relatively uh, soon. So uh, uh, one has to pay attention to uh, uh, this uh, problem. Now uh, we would like to uh, ask you uh, whether you have any questions or comments and they all are very welcome because this is one of uh, our purposes not only to uh, uh, introduce and to explain what we have done and uh, what to expect uh, from it but also to have a feedback to uh, uh, know what, what you think uh, about these issues. Whether uh, you would, uh, in the, taking into account the experience of uh, Estonia in that respect, problems here, uh, uh, and I, as I'm an Estonian, I know about uh, them, but not uh, all other members of the, uh, uh, our group are familiar so uh, intimately with these uh, problems and uh, recommendations, thoughts, what you may have. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, it's okay. I think you can all hear me. Uh, we can yes. hear, yes, but they, uh, they say that uh, it, is, it will be all on the internet. Maybe simply. Uh,
Can we deal with yeah. this again? Okay, maybe uh, I'll repeat your question. Okay. Okay. I am from the Ministry of Social Affairs and I am responsible for non-discrimination issues and equal treatment. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Müller said you know our Estonian non-discrimination laws. Um, More or less, yeah. Can I ask you how does this uh, that model law or this draft, uh, this current draft, is adding up I, my response would be uh, th that uh, um, our uh, uh, draft uh, goes uh, uh, beyond, it is not limited, first of all, to uh, discrimination issues or non-discrimination issues uh, at all. Uh, it is, uh, though non-discrimination uh, is a part of uh, uh, tolerance, increasing uh, tolerance. But for example, what we are talking about uh, specifically uh, is uh, using uh, uh, these uh, rights, uh, using uh, mass media education, using uh, uh, legislation in order to promote uh, tolerance. Uh, so it is not uh, simply uh, non-discrimination. So uh, uh, therefore, uh, 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 on the one hand, uh, I believe in our legislation, as I mentioned already, uh, uh, several issues which are here are covered already. But on the ha other hand, we don't have special uh, uh, legislative act. Uh, we don't have special uh, bodies which would uh, deal with the issues of the promotion of uh, tolerance and fight against intolerance. Thank you. But would it help if the government uh, takes the strategy on, on non-discrimination and equal treatment, which we currently lack? Because for me, it, it, um, it seems, well, you said it, it should become like a bill for the, for the uh, parliament to adopt, right? It would be uh, ideal, uh, and we don't expect, as Professor Dinstein said, that everything uh, should be here, which is because it uh, is a country, it's, uh, the response to our initiative should be country specific also. What, what may be needed uh, in one country uh, is not necessarily needed in Estonia and vice versa. And probably we are talking about very related issues like non discrimination and promotion of tolerance. But nevertheless, uh, 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 let's say, generally uh, uh, under uh, all the countries which are bound by the European Convention on Human Rights have accepted laws and legislation uh, which, uh, prom uh, which uh, prohibit discrimination. And uh, as far as I see, uh, uh, in Estonia, the problem is not uh, the lack of uh, relevant legislation uh, concerning uh, discrimination, but is the practice. The implementation. Uh, implementation, yeah. uh, but, really. But and in that sense, I believe a, a, a kind of strategy or uh, some may, maybe movement uh, would be necessary in order to deal in practice uh, with these issues of uh, uh, discrimination between men and women, uh, especially in workplace. But we have the whole gender equality department in the Ministry of Social Affairs, which deals with gender equality topics and also equal treatment topics. So what's so the problem so, then? Uh, no, that's, this is what I'm asking you about. Like, how does this draft add up to, would add up to Estonia if we'd adopted 
I, I, uh, in my opinion, may, maybe it doesn't res uh, resolve the, uh, these pro uh, problems uh, which you have. Uh, so, uh, you, uh, in uh, the factual discrimination uh, in the workplace, uh, in the area of social security, uh, for, uh, for example. But generally, prom uh, this is about the promotion of uh, tolerance. Certainly, it is not. So you want to, you more, you are prone to, um, like define tolerance. Is this the idea? That to define. Yeah, to define. No, not not only to define. It is one of the uh, points. Yes, to define uh, and how it and then has promote. to be. But this is also what the European directives actually are imposing to uh, EU countries, for instance, that we have to. Um, deal with tolerance and um, well promote tolerance. But the, it's exactly what we uh, we are draft uh, now uh, says because in uh, as Professor Einstein wants to say once again, but yeah. he already uh, said uh, that there is no comprehensive uh, document in any of the European countries. Your arms, uh, please, Monty. Well, it's a very common error to confuse. A tolerance with non-discrimination. Now, it is true that both uh, tolerance and non-discrimination uh, spring from the same point of departure, but they each go on a different path, different road. Uh, to give you an obvious example, uh, you are familiar with the Soviet Union. Estonia used to be a part of it. The Soviet Union was an atheist country. Therefore, it rejected all religion. Discrimination? There was no discrimination at all. We were not in favor of one religion as opposed to another. Not even the Russian Orthodox religion. They rejected all of them because they were atheists. Where is the issue of non-discrimination? It doesn't exist. The issue that exists is intolerance. And uh, you can see it in more uh, specific and concrete uh, contexts as well. Uh, whether it's, uh, as I mentioned, uh, anti-feminism or homophobia. I don't have to discriminate against uh, homosexuals or against women. I don't discriminate. I'm just intolerant to the views. So what, or if you take xenophobia, which is a very interesting issue because under the rules of discrimination, non-discrimination, you are allowed to discriminate between nationals and foreigners. For example, in national elections, only nationals vote. Foreigners don't have a right to vote. So you are allowed to discriminate against them. You are allowed to discriminate against them in a public office. I don't want to give a position in your ministry to a foreigner. You want to acquire a position, become a citizen, and so forth. With tolerance, we are saying xenophobia is out. So almost every issue, if you take it uh, concretely and analyze, dissect it, if you wish, the, uh, the expression in, a, in language is parse it. You know, take the sentence and parse it into its parts. When you go into one part after another, one word after another, you find out that these are two separate issues. Yes, and therefore, the fact understand. that you have equality and that you have non-discrimination does not mean that you have tolerance. Yeah, absolutely. And, and vice versa. Currently, I, as, as um, a civil servant, I am responsible for also tolerance issues uh, to promote tolerance. So right. this is actually, we have the whole um, project which deals with promoting tolerance, for instance. This is why I, I'm asking. I'm not really attacking you. I'm just asking no, how but does it add up? You, you miss an, uh, I'm, uh, excuse me, I apologize if I've not clarified myself enough. Where it comes to discrimination, you have treaties, starting with uh, the famous uh, 1965 United Nations Convention against all forms of racial discrimination. Uh, you have other texts. And usually, if you, take, if you look at the European legislation, there is a lot of legislation against discrimination. 
I don't think that there is a single European country which doesn't have a law against discrimination. Where it comes to tolerance, unfortunately, there is a paucity of legislation. And to the extent that tolerance is mentioned at all, you will find a word, a single word. We are in favor of tolerance or we are opposed to intolerance, which is essentially the same thing. What we want is to have the same concreteness, the same elaboration of the concept insofar as tolerance is concerned as non-discrimination. And it would be ideal actually to start from what you've got. I'm not saying that you should establish a new ministry, right, that will deal with it. On the contrary, I would be very happy if you will say now, from now on, based on new legislation, we are in charge of both the implementation of the principle of non-discrimination and the implementation of the principle of intolerance, which, however, has to be defined by law. And the law has to say what it means to be intolerant, what are the consequences, what is the outcome. But can you really legally enforce tolerance? I'm, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Can you legally enforce tolerance? Because for me, it's more like something to do with awareness raising. No, this is exactly our point. I mean, this is all I try to explain. How, how do you do implementation? You, you do it through education. You go through the penal code. I want new legislation, new crimes which do not exist in Estonia. Uh, how do I know? They don't exist anywhere. I'm not taking Estonia uh, as a paragon of uh, impropriety. I'm saying you are in the same boat with everybody else in Europe. You don't have the kind of legislation which in my opinion is absolutely required. And uh, whereas your intentions I'm sure are pure and perfect, you just don't do it, and it's not done anywhere else. So what I'm saying is add a new law, which will not be a standalone law that has no connection to anything else in the world. On the contrary, it fits in with the existing legislation about non-discrimination, but different angle, so to speak, different focus. Okay, thank you. If I may add one point, because we had a very similar discussion, in fact, in Warsaw, where we had a seminar with the Office of Democratic Institutions and Human Rights of the OSCE. So there were also uh, such um, questions raised and also examples that they were saying the civil servants were doing a lot. We have here leaflets, we have the reports from everything we did about anti-discrimination and so on and so forth. And the question from there was whether it's feasible to implement, to enforce tolerance. And the question was, the, the answer was the same. We are proposing it, but as Professor Dinstein said on the European level, uh, and we have heard all, also that in Strasbourg and the Euro, in the European Parliament too, it is rather no starter to propose a new treaty on tolerance because of the complexity of the subject. So it was also one of the reasons that we have adopted this approach to speak with a national legislative, legislative and to find those countries who can be the, the pioneers, who, can be the, who will be the most advanced in implementing tolerance-based legislation. And therefore we came also here to, to Estonia with the task. I would uh, add only that uh, probably uh, to your question uh, whether you can really pro uh, promote tolerance through uh, legislative uh, acts. Mostly here we have uh, in mind mass media, education and so on at schools, universities even. But some extreme uh, cases of intolerance have to be dealt with. Uh, also uh, 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 through legislative act, including uh, penal uh, legislation. But uh, these are the most uh, serious uh, cases of intolerance. Others are really, at, they may be administrative uh, measures. 
as uh, city planning even, uh, let's say that uh, uh, there aren't uh, ghettos emerging uh, of migrants, for example, in certain uh, places of uh, European capitals uh, and, and other big cities. So uh, th there are different uh, measures, uh, administrative, legislative, educative, uh, uh, and uh, so on. Uh, not only and uh, uh, and probably only in the most serious uh, cases concerning most uh, 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 difficult issues of intolerance, legislative measures, including uh, criminal uh, law, may be needed. So my response would be uh, such. Any other uh, questions, comments? Proposals, no. Okay, in such a case, thank you very much for the participation in our uh, meetings. And I hope that through the internet, uh, what we have said, what we have shown uh, here will be uh, distributed more uh, widely. Thank you very much and all the best uh, to you.